Dr. Rivas, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really interested in your degree. You actually have a Doctor of Philosophy, is that right? That's correct. So tell me how a Doctor of Philosophy ends up studying genetics. So the Doctor of Philosophy is what they refer to it a PhD in England. Uh, so I ended up getting my PhD degree or DPhil degree in human genetics uh, in the Department of Clinical Medicine at Oxford University. Uh, I spent about three years physically at the Wellcome Trust Center for Human Genetics and one year remotely in uh, New England area. So you're working at the Broad Institute in New England and studying inflammatory bowel disease? That's right. So I've had multiple stints at the Broad Institute. Initially, when I was an undergrad at MIT, uh, actually the first time I encountered the Broad Institute was when I was in high school. And uh, there was a summer research program where they said there's a part of this research program, there's a component, which is genomics. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty excited about it. And uh, that's when I heard that, for example, the Whitehead Institute Center for Genome Research, where a lot of the human genome sequencing was being done, I was transitioning to this new institute called the Broad Institute. Mm -hmm. So it, would, it was just serendipitous in the sense that I started undergrad at MIT in 2004, and this institute had just been launched in 2004. And tell me how you've taken your work in genomics and brought it here to Stanford. That's right. So my primary focus while I was at the Broad Institute and at Oxford was in understanding the genetic basis of complex traits. Uh, one of those complex traits that I did focus on was on inflammatory bowel disease. Which, so things like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis? That's right, which okay. comprises of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. And one of the features of those two diseases is that it has been a hallmark for understanding the genetic basis of complex traits. Mm -hmm. So it's it really has shown to the rest of the field as to how you should pursue a genetic study, for example. Do you think that most diseases or complex traits, as you call them, can be explained by the, their genetic basis? So each complex trait has a component that's heritable and also another component that is environmental. So heritable meaning passed down from your parents. From, passed down from the parents, that's right. And some diseases, for example, like autism and schizophrenia, have high heritability. Although, interestingly enough, it's been more challenging to map out what leads to that predisposition in individuals that do have uh, autism or schizophrenia. On the other hand, you have uh, diseases that, like type 2 diabetes, which are complex traits but are less heritable and have a strong environmental component. Inflammatory bowel disease is just at that sweet spot where there's a good mixture of heritable and environmental components contributing to disease predisposition. Can you explain why for diseases, you brought up autism and schizophrenia, why has big data not helped us solve the genetic basis of these diseases? Well, if you think about it, the field is quite young. So uh, the draft of the Human Genome Project, for example, was published in 2004. Uh, so we've really had about 13 years to really decipher uh, the genetics of these complex traits. I think right now we're at the tipping point where we're really uh, we'll be able to see hundreds of loci being mapped to complex traits like schizophrenia and autism. Inflammatory bowel disease just hit that tipping point earlier on. For example, in 2010, over 100 loci had been, or genetic uh, regions in the genome, had been mapped out to inflammatory bowel disease. Schizophrenia, uh, that story went from zero in 2010 to 115 today. So in other words, we're well on our way. So well on our way. When That's do right. you think we might know? So, um, you know, it, it's one of those initiatives where it will take uh, sharing of data across multiple locations, multiple individuals that have collected samples with schizophrenia or autism. Uh, I would imagine that within five years from now, we would have a full characterization of the genetic architecture of most of these traits. Um, although there are, will be some challenges ahead as to how we can take those insights and translate it to a single individual, for example. Well, it sounds like your field is, is just getting started with a lot of acceleration in the future. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you so much for having me.